So today we're going to be just burping the radiator and the k Commander. I had to take it apart to get the, uh, the, the A-arms in the front when I put the better ones on. So uh, when you do that, these k Commanders, they kind of suck when it comes to uh, burping. All they say is you got to like lift one side, let the air get out and all that nonsense. Uh, it's never really worked for me. So what I did was is I went and bought like that special tool that you put under the top of the radiator and you can burp it. That's the best way that I've found. Uh, and I'm gonna show you that shit today. So this is the tool right here. So I've already got it all set up. So you got this, you got that dealer right there. It comes with all sorts of other shit uh, that goes into it. So essentially you just take this bad dog and you connect it onto that. All right, so since you just take this thing, you make sure you get the right, the right radiator cap. No, I didn't. I did not. I will in a second. And you just pop that bad dog on there. There you go. I gotta bleed my brakes. That's next. We got friggin' Bama and Dex out looking for sticks. Ah, it's a crazy town. All right. So what should happen is, is uh, so we got all that and freeze in there. We'll start to see some bubbles come out where the air is trying to escape. And then, so I put it up on the log there, essentially trying to make, you know, that piece or that part of the radiator, the high point. That way as the air flows through everything, it escapes out of that. And so what happens is if you don't have one of those on, the air, or not the air, will probably push the fluid it just comes out of that and you never are able to keep enough fluid in the system to where your your machine doesn't overheat and it just continues to push the fluid out but if you have this it pushes the fluid up into this i guess you could call it like a reservoir uh, and it'll capture it and then the bubbles come out and then it'll go back down into the radiator well we'll see how it goes it's been a while since i've done it bubbling I just went into high temp mode so probably what I'll end up doing is shutting her down letting it cool down a bit and try doing it again <laughs> well shit oh see there all that fluid went let it cool down so my shit's not beeping I don't have an actual gauge where it tells me the uh, the temperature of my machine so that kind of sucks but I put more fluid in there See how it goes. That shit is wild. 
Look at all that stuff. Oh shit. Stay away from the beer. There we go. Oh god! So you shut it off and the fluid goes right back down in. Mmm. Mmm-hmm. See? Hot temp. Yelled at me. So that's why people get really frustrated with this process. Another thing that you can do is, so there's the exposed radiator hose. You can squeeze that junk. I just, you just squeeze it. But if you look at there, I can squeeze it. So it's pushing air and fluid back up into it. That way, if you have any, you know, shit that is not wanting to come out, there's another one, you can just squeeze it. So. Well, there's a sticker there. Hold on, let me move this shit. There we go. Ah, that hose is warm. That's what it is. So, just to get any uh, more stuff. So I've done this shit like three times, I think. So it'll go, it'll heat up. I will uh, shut it off and then the machine burps takes more more coolant and then i'll let it cool down and i'll start it and do it over again uh, i'm not sure i can't remember if it took this many times last time i can't remember but either way if i'm doing this wrong fuck i guess All right, so me having it before was fake news but now i've got it to a point where it'll actually run without just going right into overheating and it is taking more Fluid. You can still see it burping there. The burp, and then it'll take more fluid down into the actual radiator. So I've just been sitting here letting it run as it takes more fluid. Oh, there you go. The fan turned off. Hopefully, something I means something's going right. But as it, you can see it burping, it'll take more fluid, and I just add more fluid. It's a little bit longer process than I thought it was going to be. But oh well. It has an overheating, I don't know, maybe five minutes, which is way gooder than what it was doing. So go team, I guess. Look at this shit. Walk away for one minute and the chickens attack, attack the damn thing. They like to lay eggs right in there. All right, so I gave it some time to cool off. I'm back over here and it looks like they just sucked down all the fluid. We'll see, I'll open this bitch up. And then uh, top it off with fluid, close her up, take her on test drive, see what it does. Oh, yeah. See if we can't put a little bit more fluid in that. Stop it. So there's all the other shit that I did not use. So what I do is, is I just throw all that shit in there, plop it, and you just start getting, and then it's magic. And then you just literally do stuff like that with it, and uh, it's just there forever. I'm gonna drive this thing around for a minute, see if it overheats in the Florida, in the hot Florida weather. See how that shit goes. Uh, all back. All back. You got a twist. Twist and jerk. All right. If you want to be Redneck Express, here's another good piece of gear to take with you. So, this badass little deal, which isn't as heavy it's a little bit more expensive than your harbor freight generator but this little deal will run both the acs on my camper so i run everything else on gas especially in florida heat but this thing will run both in my camper and it's not that big it's small i can put it in my truck bed and then cover it with the uh with the topper the uh 
the topper that I have, and it does fine. Uh, so I'm just gonna change the oil in this shit. So it's about every 100 hours, I think, but usually I'll do like one trip and we'll run it for like four days straight. And then I think I did, last Thanksgiving we used it, and then I used it for, we went, to, went out to a friend's farm and dry camped out there. Um, I don't take very good care of it. It sits in the open. It's, I take it with me all the time. It's been in the rain. I hide it underneath shit, but still moisture gets to it. You can see here it sat in the rain last time. It got mad, yucky, and dirty, so I gotta clean it. And I shall change the oil. It didn't clean much. Can't really see shit. I just got all the dirt and everything out. From there, we'll go ahead and look at the oil. I really don't care what it looks like. I'm gonna change it anyhow. So it doesn't look too shitty, but I'm still gonna change it. It, it costs maybe like, uh, I don't know, like $2 to replace. So why not, uh, why not replace it anyhow? I mean, anytime you're getting ready to go on a big trip, I like to change the oil. So this thing is probably literally one of the better things I've bought. I think I paid like six hundred dollars for it. But it's a it's a digital inverter, which means during the winter, when I'm not running all my ACs, it'll run all the power in the camper um, at not a very high RPM. So last time we went, we ran my whole camper and a hot tub. So we have that inflatable hot tub we take, and when it's cold outside, we'll take it, and we'll have a hot tub in the middle of the woods. Uh, that way, if the, the kids are... Uh, you know the bosses the the wives don't want to go out in the middle of the night they don't have to <clears throat> they sit in a hot tub in the middle of the woods bomb acting fool being fine and they don't have to deal with me so <clears throat> it's a plus so last time i think it was like in the in the 40s and uh, the wives were in the hot tub the kids were in the camper playing video games uh, because it was later and we'd uh, already done a bunch of stuff outside and they didn't want to do anything anymore so all the uh, the goofy husbands could go out and do dumb stuff without having the wives yell at them the whole time literally one of the better things you could buy is a good generator Hover Freight I guess does good but this thing for being so small I can just throw it in the back of the truck I can lift it it's super light uh, it does very good for what we want to do like all that put in at this time was 10w30 which is what it takes but I took literally the cheapest shit that it would take they give you some cheap shit you can go buy some cheap shit at Walmart I was just at AutoZone so I bought literally the cheapest stuff they had it was five bucks it took maybe three dollars of it. Hopefully this bitch will start. This ball to the wall. So it's not as quiet as the uh, regular inverter, but it being an open frame is louder. However, that's it. Again. The jacuzzi I was talking about. So in the winter of, 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 of Florida, when it's not crazy death outside, it'll run this jacuzzi and this big ass camper. Like, it'll run both in the middle of the woods. The shit is okay.